Well, praise the Lord, everybody. It is so good to have everyone in the house today. We are going to Proverbs 2 today. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless his holy name. You know, Proverbs is a book of correction that the Lord had to bring day one uh, back to me yesterday. <laughs> as you know me and uh and my team were making decisions about the next move and 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 what we're doing and you know i just had to be secure in him and remember what he spoke to us on day one so proverbs 2 today and we're talking about the value of wisdom the value of wisdom let's get it in verse 1 says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures. Verse 5 says, Then you will understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. A couple of things. We're going to stick a pen right there in five. You got to search for what? You got to raise your voice. You got to seek wisdom. You got to, you got to, you know, incline your heart to understanding. And God is saying when we do all that, when we seek wisdom and God's knowledge like we do, and he has in, in verse four, like silver, like many people seek money, raises, promotion, you know, six-digit salaries. And then when they get to six digits, that's not enough. They start chasing seven digits. And, 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 and it just goes on and on and on and on where people are chasing silver. And the Bible is telling us in Proverbs 2, 1 through the first uh, five verses, that we need to chase understanding, God's knowledge, chase wisdom. And he declares that we will understand the fear of the Lord. Many people say they're doing what they're doing for the Lord because they fear the Lord, they love the Lord. But if you are not operating in wisdom and knowledge, then you're not fearing the Lord because you won't even understand what it means to fear the Lord if you're not seeking God's knowledge and wisdom. Come on here. All right, six says, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. There's nothing like an integralist believer. If you want to do anything for the Lord, and if you want to, if you want your name great so that you can bring glory to God, not so that you can be great or so that you can be worshipped or so that you can draw people to yourself, but if you want to be great so that you can bring glory to God, then you need to operate in integrity. And integrity is what you do when no one else is looking, that you have that same excitement, that you have that same um, adrenaline, that you have that same goal when you're not being recognized for it, but you're going to operate in integrity. Integrity means that you will do what you say you're going to do, even if it hurts you. There are times where I have made commitments, where I've had to stay up late at night and get it done or, and, or the day come and I just don't feel like doing what I committed to do, but I pull my bootstraps on up and I get to move and why? Because it is my integrity at stake. And when you say something and when you commit to something, you have to follow through even if it hurts. And the thing that you learn out of that is the next time you won't be so quick to commit yourself. Use wisdom. Stand in integrity. Walk in integrity. And verse 8 says, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity. Every good path. Let me read 9 again. Let me go back to 8. It says, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the ways of his saints. This is what God is doing. And when he does that, verse 9 says, then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity. Every good path. You will understand that 
chasing after wisdom and the knowledge of God will bring you equity. It will, it, it will help you in your path as you continue to move on into the, uh, with the things of God. And you will understand righteousness and justice. See, we want justice and, and, and righteousness. And we want all of these things, but we don't want to put the work in. You got to seek wisdom. If you want justice to happen in certain areas of your life or in your marriage, you got to seek wisdom. You got to seek the knowledge of God. If you want equity in your relationship, you got to seek wisdom. We know when you're talking about real estate, equity is, is a plus. It's, it's what you have beyond what the home, uh, the, the balance of the home is if you have a balance. The equity is beyond. And so if you want to go beyond in your relationships, if you want to go beyond at your job, in your career, in your business, in your ministry, in your marriage, in the relationships with your children, if you want to go beyond and understand the, uh, you have to understand the righteousness of God and follow wisdom and knowledge. If you want to go beyond, you want that equity and you want to go beyond, you got to follow. You got to run after wisdom. Listen here. Verse 10 says, for wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Hallelujah. Discretion will watch over you. Understanding will guard you discretion will watch over you understanding will guard you and here again i don't care what the enemy has planned against you but no weapon that is formed will prosper because understanding will guard you when you are having a bad day when you are not understanding everything that is going on the holy spirit will move upon somebody else's heart to what show you mercy show you grace understanding will guard you the person who have never said to you i totally get it take a minute will say that to you because the spirit of understanding will guard you and you will be more understanding with other people 12 says delivering you from the way of evil from men of perverted speech god said for who forsake the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the in the perverseness of evil men whose paths are crooked who are devious in their ways so you will be delivered from the forbidden women from the adulteress with her smooth words, who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house sinks down to death and her paths to the departed, none who go to her come back, nor do they regain the paths of life. So you will walk in the way of the good and keep to the paths of the righteous. For the upright will inhabit the land and those with integrity will remain in it. There goes that word again. But the wicked will be cut off from the land and the treacherous will be rooted out of it. Look at what happens when you don't follow wisdom, when you don't run after understanding and seek the knowledge of God. The Bible talks about clearly between the verses of 15 and, or even up from uh, 14 down to uh, verse 19. It talks about the path that you would take if you don't go after wisdom. So you will rejoice in doing evil. You will you will delight in it. Men with uh, their paths will be crooked, and they will you, they will be devious in their ways. They will be delivered from the. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. They will uh, not be in a in an honest posture because they will be devious in all of their ways. That's what that is. That's what that is. But he's saying now. In order to stay away from it, and, and he's using, you know, the women, the loose women who have forgotten their covenants with God. This is what happens when you end up in the world and not seeking the knowledge of God and the, and the wisdom of God. You end up making bad decisions. That's the whole bottom line. You end up making bad decisions. But the Bible says down in verse 20 to 22. So you will walk in the way of the good and keep to the paths of the righteous. For the upright will inhabit the land. Upright means that you do right. It doesn't mean that you're perfect, but it means that you do right. That your heart is right with God. That you are continuing to seek after him. You are continuing to run after wisdom and seek the knowledge of God so that you can do what? Here it is. Apply it to your life. 
And so the upright, the one who lives a life of repentance, the one who is not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the one who admits that they need deliverance every day. Raise your hand. I got two up. The one who admits that deliverance is needed every day, and this is an ongoing thing that we are not perfect and we have not arrived. The one who admits that, the Bible says, upright, you will inhabit the land. You will do what God created and predestined for you to do, and that is to subdue the earth. So you will inhabit the land, and those with integrity will remain in it. You can't be integrated live in this life for Jesus Christ because God is integrity. You cannot live an integrous life and then try to make an excuse about it that God understands where you are. No, but you got to press forward. You got to press forward. And he said, but the wicked will be cut off from the land and the treacherous will be rooted out of it. God is separating the wheat from the tail. Whew. I tell you, this is some seriousness. When you're dealing with wisdom and the knowledge of God, you have to put yourself in a posture to hear him and pray that God will give you a spirit of obedience, that you will walk in what he's called you to. Walk in what he's called you to. So today, my friends, as you go about your day and you are thinking on the things of God, consider the value of wisdom. When you're looking at a value of something, you want equity. Consider the value of wisdom. Father God, I thank you for today. I praise you, Lord God, for your word. I thank you, Lord God, that your word has been set, sent to, to reproof, to, to change us, to help us be more like you, Father. I thank you that your word is piercing our hearts right now because you said in your word that it is so sharp, God, that it can separate bone from marrow. And so, Father, I thank you that your word is piercing our heart and bringing us closer to you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that as we seek your face and seek wisdom and seek the knowledge of God and seek to understand you more, Father, that you will speak to us and deliver us from all evil in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters out there who are watching this video who need a word from you, God. And I pray, Father God, that you have spoken to their hearts today, Father, and that they will seek wisdom and knowledge like never before so that they can apply it to their lives, Father God. I pray, Lord, that if anyone, Father God, be without you, that they will fall to their knees and ask what must they do to be saved according to Romans 10, 9 and 10. And Father, we'll be, we'll be mindful to give your name all the praise, the glory and the honor. For you did say that every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. And so, Father, if they have need, I pray now that the spirit of worship will fall upon them and they will bow before you in repentance, O oh God. I pray, Father God, that as we continue to go through Proverbs and learning about wisdom and knowledge and, and the lifestyle that you have called us to live, that the enemy will not be able to go in and make us think that this is hard, that we cannot do this because, Father, your word declares that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so for that person who thinks that this is that this is not easy, that it's hard for them to live a life to run after you, Father God, I pray, Father, that you will open up their spiritual eyes and ears, O oh God. Father God, and help them to walk in the path that you predestined and preordained for them to walk in. Hallelujah, Father, because your word declares that we should lean not into our own understanding, but acknowledge you in all of our ways, and you will direct our path, Father. And so today, I thank you. I declare and decree that you direct our path in the name of Jesus. And not only that you direct it, but Father, we will, we will follow suit and be obedient to your word. It is in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. We praise you. And we thank you. Amen and amen. Fam, God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing, on Proverbs 3. Bask in the wisdom and consider today the value of wisdom. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you.